the poultry industry is gradually collapsing on the small and medium scale broiler poultry farmers because of the current market dynamics where the cost of raising your bears is constantly rising daily you hear a new price weekly you hear a new price imagine where you are buying um day old chicks between 700 naira to 1000 naira and you also imagine where you are buying one bag of feed one bag of feed that is 25 kg for 20,000 naira to 30,000 naira and at the end of all this struggle and at the end of spending recklessly and at the end of spending because you have no choice to raise this best when the best finally get to maturity you are being pressured to sell those same best at a loss or possibly no profit at all now i want to ask you poultry farmers are you tired of struggling to make ends meet because of this low pricing are you frustrated that your effort has no proof whatsoever now I want you to know that you are not alone in this because virtually all the broiler poultry farmers, especially in the major cities in this country, Nigeria, is facing the same challenge. But have you ever asked yourself, why is this happening? Why am I struggling for no reason and then making no money or possibly losing my money at the end of the day raising broiler chickens? Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what is really happening right now. And also I'm going to be exposing the culprits behind this. And um, I will also share a solution to you to help you secure and retain your place in this broiler poultry industry. And the video is starting right now. First of all, let me take you down memory lane and then we gradually drag it to this current time that we are in. The poultry industry back in the days maybe when our parents we are kind of young boys was dominated by small scale farmers well i don't know whether they call themselves poultry farmers back then because um what we had we are people who we are doing this consistent kind of raising chicken they just have few hen and maybe one cock which they grow together and when they mature they have sex and then the hen lay fertilized egg and as the custom of hen is they will just lie on top of the egg to incubate it for some days and then later the egg will hatch chick that's where you see mother hen moving and the chicks are moving along with it so the mother hen raise them to a certain stage they become adults they repeat the same cycle and then you start seeing these people now gradually turning from people who owned few chicken behind their houses to owning several chicken to the extent that they can afford now to start selling chicken in their local communities. That was historically back in the days. Then sometime in early 2000, the large scale producers came into the poultry farming business. Yes, large scale producers like, um, let's say like Said, Said Hatchery. Then later on, the Valentine Hatcheries. When these large scale producers came into the poultry industry, they came with improved technology. They came with advancement. You understand? That was what actually farmers needed at that particular point in time to advance the poultry course. Now you don't need to, as a farmer, you don't need to start raising just few hen and a cock and then gradually start multiplying it. Because now they hatch the chicken. They hatch chicks. You can now come to them and say, I need like 100 chicks, they will chicks, and they will give you two cartons. And apart from that, they came with growth in the poultry industry. They brought imported, they imported special breeds into the poultry industry. Special breeds like um, Said Race or 308 breed of broilers, why um, um, hatcheries like um, Valentine do Abueka Plus. Not the regular Abueka, but the Plus. You understand? So they came with a better deal but the good thing was any business that has no customers will crumble so they didn't crumble why because the poultry farmers supported them by patronizing them at a time some of them decided to maybe let's say they wanted to test a new poultry another part of poultry industry they ventured into feed milling they started making their own feeds 
like Saeed, Saeed introduced Breedwell feed. Breedwell feed is one of the best feeds that we have here in Nigeria, no doubt. It's expensive, no doubt. But it gives farmers what they want. The level of crude protein is nice and all that. So farmers were happy, not minding what the price was. Now remember, some of them are already in hatchery business. Now they ventured into feed business. Then gradually, maybe the grid level went up. And then they decided to venture into raising bears. Raising bears to maturity with the farmers. See how it is. I'm selling the old chicks to you. And then I'm raising the old chicks with you to maturity. When farmers finally raise these bears to maturity, which normally should be their own time to shine, should be their own time to profit and be able to take care of their personal needs and people around them, these same hatcheries bring their own chicken to the market with the farmers. Not just that they bring it to the market with the farmers, they overproduce it. They produce more, they bring it to the market, and then they crash the price. Remember, we are the ones funding this large-scale producers by buying their deal chicks. Without us, their hatchery will fail within two weeks. We are still the ones funding them by buying their feed. Without us, the feed will stay in their store, expire and spoil. They will lose a lot of money and they will crash out and leave the business. So for us helping them by patronizing them, for us supporting them to do their business very well, the way they pay us back is to find a way to push us out from the business. They are now trying to dominate the whole industry. I'm not against that. If you have your money, you can do your business any way you want to do it. But there is a principle and a way of doing business. You don't do what we call antitrust practices. It doesn't make sense. Since we are raising these things at almost a zero cost of production, because we farmers are the ones funding them, and at the end of the day, you still want to push us out from the industry so that you would entirely dominate the whole industry. Go to different markets. Go to markets in the major cities in this country. You will see Said beds, Said dress chicken everywhere. You will see Valentine dress chicken everywhere. I'm not annoyed that they are in the market with us, but the problem is the pricing. They bring their price very low. Do you know how much they will chicks cost presently? No, depending on where you are based. You will be getting dewey cheese currently between 700 naira and 1,000 naira. How much is a bag of breadwell feed? It's between 23,000 naira and 30,000 naira, depending on the location where you are buying the feed from. So after all this heavy cost of production, after all this, now as a small and medium scale poultry farmer, you bring your best to the market, and then you are seeing that um, these bigger guys that we've been funding in our small way, are now in the market with a lower price. They crash the price. You don't have any other option. You know that you can't continue raising this bets because it will mean that you'll be putting in more money on top of the one you've already spent. Then you succumb to the pressure. You sell at a loss just to recover, just to recover your impute. Most times, you just get back what you put in after all the stress and hard work. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I don't know the end game of these guys, but let me tell you for sure, over 70% of poultry farms, especially broiler poultry farmers, are shutting down. And when they are shutting down, in fact, 99.9% .9 of the poultry farms we have in Nigeria are owned by individuals. They are not owned by the government. So these individuals created a place for themselves to be able to earn a living, raise their family, and support their loved ones. Now, 70% are shut down. Why is this 70% shutting down? If we translate this to figures, we'll be saying that we already, these few individuals are putting a minimum of over 20,000 people out of jobs. Because let's assume the farmer is a family person. He has a wife and maybe two or three children. The farmer also has a farm attendant, maybe one. And that one also has a wife, maybe no children. Now we are talking about six people from just one farm. Now calculate the number of farms that we have. The painful part is that the one, we are the ones funding these guys by patronizing them. And they are breaking a lot of Nigerian laws, but no one seems to say anything about it. Let's talk about the antitrust practice. According to the Federal Competition and um, Consumer Protection Act 2020, 2018, it 
prohibits businesses from these antitrust practices, including abuse of dominance, market manipulation, predatory pricing, and finally unfair competition. Now, when we talk about the Standard Organization Act of 2015, which regulates the standard of products you bring to the market. Now imagine, are you trying to tell me that these hatcheries are giving you the best products when they are also taking a part of that product to raise for themselves? No, definitely. They are taking the best for themselves and then giving us the rest. That's where farmers begin to experience not having uniformity in the weight of their best from day one to the final day. And yet, farmers are careful enough not to make this mistake themselves. And at the end of the day, what is the reward they get from? They say the problem is from the hatchery. And then we all just keep quiet. These guys are breaking a lot of laws. So now, here are a few of the solutions that I recommend that we try out and it will certainly work out. Number one, there is an old Igbo saying that says, when one or two people prepares food for the community, it will not take the community any time to finish it. They will just finish it almost immediately. But when the community prepares a meal for one or two people, guess what? they will never be able to finish that meal. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It is time for us farmers to stand up for ourselves. If you are a poultry farmer, as long as you have just one broiler that you are raising for commercial purpose, you don't need to be an elected official. You are already a stakeholder in this poultry industry. So therefore, you should not allow anybody to intimidate you. It is time for us farmers to stand up and boycott any product from hatcheries that are doing this kind of behavior. Hatcheries like Said, they are feed breed well, hatches like Valentine, and if the, com uh, the population is willing to support us, it is also time to boycott any product, finished product that they are bringing to the market because they are putting a lot of people out of work. Number two, I don't know why farmers are afraid of joining farmers' union. Even the Okada riders have Okada union. We have National Union of Road Transport Workers that has to do with um, commercial buses and cabs. If you go to the market, you see the traders' union. If you go to the slaughterhouse, you see the butchers' union. Even the abokis that come to the farm to buy chicken from us as the middlemen, they have union. What of the cold storerooms? They all have unions. Then why are farmers afraid of joining unions? This is one of the problems that we are facing. And this is why it is easier for these few people to penetrate us easily. Imagine they are doing this thing, raising this best all the way from Ibadan. And then they will load it in trailer, cold, cold trailers, and transport it all the way from Ibado, and then penetrate major cities in the country. Why are they not doing that kind of business in Ibado? Why are they not trying to abuse their dominance in Ibado? It's because I feel, I may be wrong, but I feel that Ibado has a strong farmers union, poultry farmers union. So this is the best time for us to all stand up and join poultry farmers union. Number three. Though it's going to be hard, but this is the time that farmers are going to learn how to market their products the hard way. And I can only suggest for you, back in the days I was in kind of a little bit of marketing, network marketing, we used to say this, that with the contacts you have in your phone, you already have an asset. So this is the time for you to go through your phone, check people who you know that are within the same vicinity with you. You test them, send them an XMS that you have bears available, matured bears. You can include the weight and also include the price. As much as possible, if it's possible for you, you can give them discounts. Go to your churches, meet members in your church one-on-one. -on -one. Go to the mosque, meet members in your mosque one-on-one. -on -one. Go to your offices, tell people this one-on-one. -on -one. And also, I'm using this opportunity to also call upon as the fourth way out in this situation is to call upon the Poultry Association of Nigeria. I don't just need to say anything much. You guys know what's wrong right now. So you better step in and take up the mantle as our leaders and do the right thing for us. I'm also calling on government agencies like the FCCPA, that is the Federal Competition and um, Consumer Protection Act. I'm calling on the Standard Organization of Nigeria to look into our matter. And finally, I'm calling on the federal government. Minimum of 20,000 people are losing their jobs, losing their jobs in the farm. Farm owners are shutting down. Farm attendants are losing their jobs. What of the people who are relenting on them and benefiting their livelihood from them? Are they not still part of those losing their jobs? This is not part of the promise. So please, the federal government should also step up in this 
and help the farmers out because farming is the future. When there are farmers in the country, the, the country is great. No farmers, no nation. That's our adage. Great farmers, great nation. No farmers, no nation. Right now, the poultry sector is shutting down and few people are monopolizing it. These are very few points that I can be able right now to share with you guys that I know that all of them will certainly work, especially that number one, boycotting all products of Saeed and Valentine hatcheries because they are the particular ones that are doing this. So if you feel that you learn something new um, in this particular video or you feel like you are looking for a way to vent out your grievances, feel free to share it in the comment section. If you also know other hatcheries that are into this kind of antitrust practices and making farmers feel irrelevant at this particular point in time. Feel free to share them in the comment section so that we know people who are the source of our problem. Also, try to like this video and share it so that the video will be able to go as much viral as possible to also educate other farmers.